Somewhere in that direction is a fancy Fifth Avenue building where the bird Pale Male used to nest with his mate before they got rid of him and then he came back. And that's the wildlife area. I th I'm not sure exactly what they call it. They used to just call it the zoo. Now I'm looking west and in that direction is Inscope Arch. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you how well hidden it is. So I'm just going to go to Inscope Arch. Having shown you the orientation and how to get there. Inscope Arch was built in 1870 by Calvert Vox. And at this point, here you can see it's pink limestone and gray granite. It's gorgeous. At that point, Olmsted didn't technically have anything to do with the building of the park, but he was involved. He was involved informally, as I understand it. Now, the brickwork inside is not in such great shape. 34 feet long. And turn around. I think even so, Olmsted's spirit kind of hovers over this beautiful arch because it's just so simple and so exquisitely beautiful. When there's a rain, this, this arch gets flooded. And this arch connects to the pond, the area of the pond. I'm going to go there. And then I'm going to go to the top of this little hill and give you a view of Gapstow Bridge. I don't know whether that big rock outcropping is schist. I have a tendency to call everything in Central Park, every rock outcropping schist. It could easily be some other kind of rock. But that's how, how Vox and Olmsted built the park. They built it, they built it in, in concert with the natural landscape. Of course, <laughs> okay, that's Gapstow Bridge, and we're lucky again. We have a, we have an instrumentalist here. Just wanted to get a look of a look at Turtle Pond from this perspective. It's really beautiful. I called it Turtle Pond. It's not Turtle Pond. This whole area was a swamp. 